Hello, my name is David Bernstein. I'm a postdoc at the University of California, Berkeley, working on this project together with undergraduate student Han Chao Zhang and Professor Adam Arkin. And in this talk, uh, we'll be telling you about our work do you, for developing a phylogenetic sensitivity analysis to identify microbial signatures of environmental contamination. So the introduction and motivation of this work, um, we are in the bioengineering department where we study uh, microorganisms and microbial communities. And we know that microbial organisms are incredibly ubiquitous in nature. Some estimates um, have been made that a single gram of soil contains between 2,000 to 50,000 different microbial species. So um, that's a wide range, but either way is an incredible amount of microbial diversity that's um, found in uh, natural environments. And we also know that the composition of these microbial communities uh, can be sensitive to different environmental variables. And we're starting to collect more data sets that have both microbial community composition and environmental features like chemical uh, measurements. Um, but what we need now are um, more development of computational approaches that help us mechanistically link uh, these two types of measurements, the uh, environmental uh, features with microbial community compositions. So in our work, we'll present here a phylogenetic sensitivity analysis that we're developing to help improve machine learning with microbial genomics data where we're trying to predict environmental uh, variables. And the mission relevance here is that we are developing approaches for and assessing the feasibility of um, these approaches that use microbial genomics data to monitor nuclear fuel processing activity by um, being able to predict different uh, types of contaminants in the environment. And the main question we're sort of trying to answer is, from an environmental sample, can we determine the chemical processes that took place at a particular site and which microbes or even groups of microbes are driving the signal? So a basic sort of graphical abstract of our approach is shown here. Um, on the left, on the top left here, imagine we have basically uh, several different environmental samples from both contaminated and pristine sites. And these environmental samples have different microbial community compositions. And we can measure the composition of the microbial community by sequencing this one gene in the microbial genome called the 16S gene, which is part of the microbial ribosome. And by sequencing this gene, we get this relative abundance comp composition of different microbes across each sample. On the right, we can also reconstruct this phylogenetic tree, which relates each of these microbes evolutionarily. And each, each microbe in this tree, they share traits essentially across this tree. So certain groups in this tree may have similar traits. Um, and while our data might be somewhat random at the more uh, detailed resol phylogenetic resolution, if we look at just each individual organism across the samples, if we group our organisms up to higher phylogenetic clades, like for example, this red clade here, we can see that this organisms within this clade are more sensitive to this environmental condition. So by grouping the data, we're able to improve our ability to predict this environmental condition from our microbial uh, genomic data. And the data that we are currently using is um, samples of contaminated groundwater from a nuclear waste contaminated site in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And this site has very high levels of nitrate and heavy metal contamination, including uranium contamination. And we have collected these 16S sequences of microbial community composition. And the original publication of this data is shown here uh, below. So in our approach, 
um, we are transforming this 16S sequence data into phylogenetic clusters. So shown here on the, on the left is the phylogenetic tree of all of the sequences found in this pristine and contaminated uh, groundwater samples. And we have, um, so we are able to uh, transform this tree into this basically a binary matrix that represents the tree. And then we can multiply that binary matrix by this 16S sequences by samples matrix of counts of each organism in the data and transform it into a phylogenetic clades by samples matrix that we can then use as the input for machine learning algorithm. So if we're if we look here at the, what we've done here is a large scale sensitivity analysis where we are predicting whether or not a sample is contaminated with high levels of uranium from either in blue, just the input 16S sequences or in red, all of the different phylogenetic uh, clusters or clades. And here we're also performing it a further sensitivity analysis where we're looking at this clustering threshold where sequences are grouped together before building the tree, even by similarity, and this uh, abundance cutoff where we remove low abundance uh, sequences. And we're showing here the uh, number of features that are input into our algorithm um, as we change these different parameters. And what we can see is that even though using all of the phylogenetic clusters as inputs uh, increases our number of features by about twofold, we still have similar, uh, if not in some cases, improved performance of our classification algorithm here um, across a wide range of parameters. So we can also um, use this algorithm to identify which phylogenetic clades are the most important for the prediction. So to do this, we map the feature importances from the machine learning model back onto the phylogenetic tree, which is shown here with a red ring around the tree that indicates the importance of each different feature on this tree. And for this case of predicting uranium contamination, we see this large clade of about 1,200 different sequences that pops out as highly predictive in our data. Um, and the composition of the different phyla in this clade is shown on the top right. And with closer inspection, we can see that these organisms have a negative correlation with the total uranium. Total uranium. So they're presumably generally abundant but sensitive to this uranium contamination. Um, the, ex the expected impact of this work, if successful, um, our approach could serve as a general strategy for wide area monitoring of environmental samples for contaminants. And this approach could also have some level of memory as the contaminants might create a lasting change in the microbial signature that could persist even after um, cleanup of the uh, contaminating material. And uh, more generally, the computational approaches we're developing that link environmental variables with microbial genomics and identify predictive phylogenetic clusters of organisms are also useful across different fields ranging from environmental uh, microbiology to human health related microbiome research. Um, and being part of the MTV consortium has um, allowed us to collaborate with a wide range of experts. We are particip we've participated in the monthly MTV calls and workshops. We're also able to continue to strengthen our collaboration with labs at Oak Ridge National Lab, Savannah, Ridge, Savannah River National Lab, and MIT, where we're studying these microbial communities from nuclear waste contaminated field sites. And we've also been able to leverage connections with Lawrence Livermore National Lab to 
uh, get some expert uh, advice and consulting on our project. So uh, in conclusion, uh, we've developed a sort of general approach for linking environmental variables with microbial 16S data by representing all phylogenetic scales simultaneously. And this work specifically provides insight into microbial signatures of contamination at a nuclear waste contaminated site, including the ability to predict uranium contamination in groundwater samples. Uh, moving forward, our next steps are to further validate uh, and apply our approach with different types of data. So we're developing a general statistical model to simulate microbiome counts data to further validate our approach under the assumptions that we are making about the data. And we're also continuing to collect data with our collaborators uh, from a separate contaminated field site, which will allow for a stronger cross-validation of our predictions. So with that, I'd like to thank the MTV Consortium, the NNSA, and DOE for making this work possible and to the uh, excellent community of national labs and universities that we've had the pleasure of working alongside. So thank you.